Good morning, Ziegler family and others all around the world. It is my joy to meet with you again this morning, and we have such an important topic. So as you're coming on, if you would begin to like and share this so that others can join us for this very, very, I said it again, sorry, very important topic today. Every Sunday is important. It is our time to come together around the fire of the love of God. And it is such a privilege for me to help to bring you into a deeper understanding of the Word of God and the life of God through Christ Jesus, Yeshua. Hello, I see you starting to come on who is, thank you so much, thank you for being patient. I see you coming, thank you. And I love you all, I love you so much. And that is why I do this, because I love you. It is because I love you that I tell you the truth. A good mother, <laughs> and that's what I am, is someone who is willing to speak the truth. Hi, everyone. I just get a little distracted by the love you're giving back to me right now. And hi, Mindy. Hello, Shalin. Uh, Hello around the world. Rowena, good to see you. Hello. I um, am so delighted. Hi, Samad. Samad. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for watching. Cindy Ziegler Oates is watching. She is the daughter of the great Zig Ziegler, who I had the privilege of representing on his web page. Mr. Ziegler passed into eternity. He went home. And so um, he would want us to help others find their way home. And as a matter of fact, that is what today's topic is all about, is finding our way home in the wilderness of the world, where to find guidance, Wow, do we need guidance? Give me a thumbs up if you need guidance. Give me a thumbs up if you feel a little bit lost. Because oh, I see it. I see it coming in. Oh, yes. A little bit lost in this world. And for good reason. Because the world, this is not our home. It will be when it's recreated, when heaven and earth merge. But in the meantime, it's a lot like the wilderness that the children of Israel wandered around in for 40 years. And so they needed guidance. And God provided guidance. Oh, did he? Uh, well, let's just talk about a pillar of cloud by day and a fire at night. They were never without the presence of God. And that is what he does for us here and now through the beautiful presence of his spirit. He said, I will never leave you, Cindy. Rhoda, Princess, High Princess Gloria Smith, Shalom, Shalom to you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Johan, I will never leave you or forsake you. George, Georgianette, I will never leave you. Sherry, I will never leave you. Tenny, hello, Tenny, I will never leave you or forsake you. Shailen, amen, I will never leave you or forsake you, is what Jesus said before he ascended into his his rightful home beside at the right hand of abba father where he sits even as we speak now there's so many mysteries to the trinity but we are told that he lives now to intercede for us 
He has not stopped working on our behalf. Please pay attention. Please listen deeply. His eye is on you as deeply as his eye is even on the sparrow. So yesterday, I have to share this. Yesterday, we were preparing for today's chapel here at Hidden Life Ministries. And we, Annette, Nettie, and I were out in the garden um, doing our thing. Uh, watering plants, sweeping, and cleaning for the brunch that will follow our chapel. I wish all of you, uh, well, now that would be interesting, right? I wish all of you could be here. And so I share these things so that, in a sense, you can be here at Hidden Life Ministries. And by the way, you can learn more about that if you're interested. I think that Mr. Zig Ziglar would love Hidden Life Ministries, where we talk about that our real lives are hidden in Christ Jesus. And we get this right out of the book of Colossians, where the Apostle Paul said, set your mind on things above, not on the earth, for you have died and your real life is hidden in Christ our Lord. So that's where this comes from. So Nettie and I are out there um, cleaning and she says, oh, Janie, come and see what I, uh, there's a, there's a, a dead little bird um, that has fallen in the sacred garden. And I'm like, oh no. And I go and she shows me and at first she thought it was the head of a little bird, but it turns out it was a tiny little hummingbird. And certainly it had fallen. I don't know why. My dogs couldn't have done it. No, no, they could. They're pretty smart, but they're not. They wouldn't hurt a little bird. I don't know what happened to this little bird, but what it reminded. And so Nettie, okay. So Nettie, I'm walking away. I'm like, oh, and I know she's got to sweep it up and, and throw it away. And she said to the little bird, he saw you fall. Hmm. And I, I just loved that. I don't even know if she knew I heard that, but she was, she was reminding me of the passage of scripture and speaking it, which is he knows when a sparrow falls to the ground, how much more does he know our needs and every detail, by the way, of our needs. So I don't know if you feel lost in the woods somewhere. I don't know if you feel like um, you are really um, underwater, if you will, but he sees you. He loves you. He knows where you are. He knows the way. And he is the way. So today, what we are doing with this series, with how to find your footing in the wilderness of the world, is we are actually walking through, if you will, and finding our footing on the great I am statements of Yeshua Jesus when he walked in the wilderness of the world. Yes, he did. God showed his love to us by sending his one and only son so that through him we might find our way. And that brings me to today's um, amazing, astonishing words of Yeshua Jesus. And by the way, you know, I'm the messenger. I'm not the one being exclusive here when I speak these exclusive words of Yeshua. I'm the messenger. I try with all of my heart to be a faithful messenger of his word because his word is true and his word brings us into life. So if you want to shoot someone, <clears throat> if you want to shoot someone, you can shoot the messenger, but it's Yeshua who said these words right here. I love this picture. I found this on the internet of him walking along the wilderness of the world. But here is what he said. I am the way the truth, and the life. Hmm. 
No one can come to the Father except through me. Wow, that is exclusive. Those words are spoken from the mouth of Yeshua, Jesus, are exclusive words. Now, there is a reason that he spoke these words that are exclusive, and I'm going to unpack that for you. But I want you to take them in deeply. <clears throat> so let's read them again. I am the way, not one of many ways. I am the way, and I researched this and studied it, and we'll talk about it. I am the way. Mm, I'll stop right there. The truth, not one of many truths. The truth. Um, as my friend Rebecca likes to say, um, this is a piece of paper. You can call it a rock. You can say that it it's water. You can um, call it a cloud, but it's paper. And truth is truth. Um, you can try to change language and redefine terms, but truth is truth. And Jesus is the one who said he is the truth. The truth. Not a truth or one of many truths and many, many roads to heaven. You know, there are many roads, but you're all going to stand in front of Yeshua, the very beloved son, the Holy One of God who humbled himself and came and put on flesh. Do you have any idea what that's like? It's like us becoming a banana slug, as C.S. Lewis likes to say. Or, you know, he, he, this, this eternal God took on this, he became a speck of dust like us. The love is just phenomenal. It is phenomenal what he did for us. It is phenomenal that he even took on flesh. But then to walk the path all the way to the cross, do you understand how incredible this is that God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Do you understand how much love Yeshua, Abba, Father, Spirit had for us that they would do this for us? It is, it is jaw-dropping, astonishing. If you have lost the awe, may you find it again. May you find it again, my friends. The truth, the transcendent, eternal, eternal truth of God put on flesh and walked among us. He is also the life, not just part of life, the life. That's why I say nurture soul and become whole. It's all in him. It begins in him. You know, over and over and over again, we know people that took great care of their bodies and, and practice yoga every day and eat holistically and, and, you know, did all the things you're supposed to do, check all the boxes. But guess what? They're still going to meet their death. And if they're not nurturing soul with the life of God, they will die and stand in front of him. And he will say, who do you say I am? I pray that all of you understand that that is where we end up. Now, yes, all of, there are many good things we can learn from many traditions. I do not throw that away. I do not. I take good things from other traditions because all truth is God's truth. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? <laughs> this is the year, right? Do you think, think with me, think with me, hear with me, and maybe you too will speak with me. 
Do not be one of those who will close your eyes and close your ears and, and speak what the world speaks because you want to be politically correct. You're not helping anyone. You're not bringing life to anyone. And I don't say that you should do it like blow me down and be mean-spirited. No, 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 no. That's what turns people off. Speak with love as Jesus did. Speak with life as Jesus did. Speak with <sighs> compassion as Jesus did. Because many people have lost their way and need to know the way, the truth, and the life. So my prayer is that all of you who know he is Yeshua, the way, the truth, and the life, will get back on the path if you have lost your way. Do not, do not, do not listen to false voices. Do not, do not, do not listen to lies. Do not, do not, do not turn your eyes away from the one who knows the way, who is the way. Do not, do not, do not try to find life in anyone or anything other than Yeshua because everything else will crumble and fall. Stay close to him. Let me show you some of the downloads that I got to share with you that are um, practical and spiritual and will help you, I hope. And maybe not, but I try, and that's all I can do. So, a couple of things here. Don't lose sight of the guide. Hmm. He knows the way. Expect circumstances to change. I The reason that it's so important to say this is that one of the reasons that people stop following Yeshua because their life gets, you know, things change up and things get challenging and they think, well, ah, this doesn't feel like life. Uh, I don't like this way. I don't want this way. I like comfort. I want to stay in my comfort zone. No, he never said that. You're, 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 you forget. He said, if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. He never said it was going to be comfortable or easy. I love, love, love the words of Amy Carmichael, a very, very astonishing, great woman of God who started orphanages in India and after she got them up and running was struck with a sickness. Talk about change of circumstances. Amy Carmichael, this amazing, courageous woman, was thrown into a sick bed and she's like, really, Lord? I'm following you. I'm getting this up and running and you throw me into the sick bed. And by the way, he never, he never, he never healed her. He had a purpose for her sick bed because he wanted to whisper things into her soul that she would have never heard if she had been vibrant and busy. And she became an astonishing light to people all over the world because she wrote down what she heard. And one of the things that I learned from one of my mentors, Elizabeth Elliott, that she learned from Amy Carmichael was this. Has he traveled far? Who has no wounds, no scar? Hmm. So my friends... You must travel the road that Jesus traveled. It is El Camino Real, the King's Highway. And by the way, a fun fact about Hidden Life Ministries. You can learn about that at hiddenlife.com or you can just come to janieseltzer.com. That's my website. And there's a link there, to, of course, to our ministry, Hidden Life. But one fun fact about it is that we border 
El Camino Real. Up our hillside, the sacred garden, up at the top of the hill is a busy road, but it started out as a dirt road. It was named El Camino Real, which in Spanish means the King's Highway, by the Franciscan monks who first plowed through the, to make a road, and all of the great missions of California are along El Camino Real, a Camino Real. Is that a fun fact? Did you know that? I love the missions. They're holy places. I love to go. The jewel of the missions is right up my road. It's called um, the San Juan Capistrano Mission, and it's the jewel of the missions. It's a holy place. I love to go there. But we have established a mission along El Camino Real, the King's Highway, and I didn't even know what he was having me do until it was built, and I realized, oh my goodness, we too have followed the, the, the godly. They had godly intent when they created this road and built these missions, and we too have a godly intent to create a mission where souls can be tended, where couples and families and individuals come. Thank you for your thumbs up. I see them all. I love it. Where people and families and individuals come to be tended. If you'd like to be tended, you too can come. Just reach out to me through janieseltzer.com. But at any rate, he is El Camino Real. That's my point. Jesus Yeshua is El Camino Real. And he said, the king's highway, you must be willing to walk all the way to the cross with me. Do you hear me, my friends? If you feel like you've done nothing but die, I feel like I'm dying. I'm just surrendering all the time. That's why I have my seven sacred signposts because one of the signposts is surrender. The, that's number three. And number four signpost is struggles. It's part of the path. We've got to walk the path he walked. And we will find life and life to the full that no one can take away. Are you getting it? Are you getting it, my friends? It, it is the path. It's the path of dying is the path of life. We're dying to our old self, the old worldly self, and we're finding more and more life in Christ as he purifies our souls so that we might breathe. <sighs> His life and his love breathe out, <sighs> breathe in. His life, his abundant life that enlivens our souls and enables us to be forever with him. So, um, back to these powerful points. Um, I think they're powerful anyway. It's what he gave me. So, don't lose sight of the guide. Keep your eye on Jesus. Expect circumstances to change. Hey, we have a traveling God. He doesn't keep us in our comfort zone. He takes us. He grows us. And the five P's to success. Does everybody know the five P's to success? My husband, Big Dog Don, he taught these in the pulpit for so many years. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. Yes, it does. You need to prepare yourself. You need to know you're walking with Yeshua all the way to the cross and resurrection. So, prior preparation prevents poor performance. Don't expect to stay where you are in your comfort zone. Expect trials and tribulations. Expect troubles. Expect surrender. Expect stillness. Be still and know that I'm God. Expect to learn about the treasures of the kingdom, secrets of the kingdom. Expect to see more and more about yourself and more and more about God. Expect sweetness Oh, yes, the sweetness of the presence of God. Expect to learn more and more about him. I never stop learning. I learn more and more and more, and so can you. All right, those are the five Ps. And don't be afraid of change. 
oh my goodness, did he teach me this long time ago. Don't be afraid of change. I've told you stories about that. I'm not going to go there again. But let me just repeat that truth. Don't be afraid of change because he's with you. He walks beside you. He knows where you're going and he knows the way. He is the way. All right, so let's move on. Follow every leading, no matter the effort required. Listen up, my friends. Huh. Don't leave for tomorrow what you can do today. You know, I don't know where I learned that long time ago, but it was an important practical, practical, you know, spiritual and practical, marry one another. If we follow Yeshua, he'll give us the practical things we need to know. And what I, one of the things I learned is don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Don't say, Ah, do that tomorrow. If you can do it today, do it. If you're given instruction on what to do, do it. Don't wait. If you can, if you have to put it on the back burner, we can't do everything every day. We have to sort and have priorities. But if there's space in your life to do his instruction today, do it. A lot of things are put on the back burner and never come to the front burner and to our sadness because we have missed an opportunity to grow. Do not put off to tomorrow what you can do today. Important. Don't back off because it's hard. Another thing I learned, do the hard things first. I sometimes... Uh, you know, figure out when your power time is. If your power time is, is in the morning, get your hard stuff done first so you can reward yourself and breathe in the afternoon. If your power time is at night, do the hard stuff. Don't get lost somewhere in the woods. Do your hard stuff then. Whenever you're at your op optimum, do what you can do. You see, we are kingdom builders and we can help he left us on this planet to make a difference in the world. And to be a kingdom builder is to make a difference wherever you are. So, follow every leading, no matter the effort required. And number four, face each day's difficulty hmm, with your divine helper. Oh, yeah. Hmm. We do face, good morning, <clears throat> hi Robert, God bless you too. So face each day's difficulty with your divine helper. He doesn't give us heavy burdens to carry and then just leave us alone. He actually said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and, and, uh, for I am gentle in spirit, and you will find rest for your soul. I left a phrase out there. Somebody help me with that. Um, I am, for my yoke is easy. I got it. Whew, had a senior moment there. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So friends, he, okay, envision, you've got this work to do. He gives you work, your kingdom builder, and, but you're under this yoke and he's carrying the hard part. You know, he, he'll do the hard part, but we still have to put in some effort. We've got a divine helper, but he asks us to move with him. Do what we can do. What can I do? So we have a divine helper. And I learn, have learned this lesson over and over and over and over again. Um, and I want to show you, if I can find it, um, what I show you something really fun. Hello, where are you? Ah, here it is. Here it is. Look at this. Look at this. All right. I found this picture. I thought, wow, this is a great, whoever did this, whatever artist out there, you know, wow, what a great gift. We see Jesus, Yeshua. What do you see there? We see him through the water. And his hand reaching in. 
this probably brings back memories to all of you of that amazing place in the scripture where we are told that Jesus, Yeshua, invited Peter out into the water and he was fine as long as he kept his eye on the master. But when he took his eyes off the master, Hello, what did we say? Keep your eye on the guide. When he took his eye off the guide, he started sinking into the water and he was about to drown. And Yeshua reached his hand out to Peter, the rock falling at the depth into the depths of the sea, like many of you may feel you're falling into the depths of the sea, but you're not going to die. He reaches out with his divine hand and says, I will help you. I will help you. I will help you take my hand. I will lift you up out of the miry waters, I will lift you up and you will walk with me on the top of the water. You will experience miraculous happenings in your life if you will take his hand. He reaches for you now. Take his hand, my friends. He loves you. He offers his hand. You need to give him yours. Take his hand. I take his hand every day. I say, here, Lord, is my hand. You lead. I will follow. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You know how to get me home safely to Abba, Father. Come, Spirit, comfort your people. Comfort, comfort your people. Help them as you have helped and do help me every day. One time when I felt lost, <laughs> well, I feel lost a lot. Every one of us, we get lost and then we find our way. And what the key is to not stay lost but a minute or two or a second. I mean, lostness is part of the human condition because we feel so vulnerable in this world. And so it's a constant. And so the key is to learn to more quickly find the hand so that we can get secure in our footing again. And one of these times, um, I, these words came to me and I want to share them with you. You know the way that I take. My path is not hidden from you. You show me the path of life. I am near to home and not alone. Yes, yes, yes. Above this little poem, these words, is an important scripture for today's teaching on where to find guidance in the wilderness of the world. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Wow. And these words were written long before the time of the physical entrance of God into our world. These words were written probably by Solomon long during the Davidic reign of Israel, the reign that will return when Yeshua returns. But it just shows that 
the people of Israel had every opportunity to walk closely with their God, as do all people all over this planet. If we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding, like, I'm going to think my thoughts, not his thoughts. I'm going to go my way, not his way. Whew, you want to be lost. That's the way to do it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't trust yourself. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't trust me. I, uh, oh, no way, Jose. I got enough of that old person that I haven't been fully transformed and I won't be until I'm in his holy presence, which I long for. But we're always, always leaning into his heart, his understanding. We acknowledge him. Acknowledging him means I see you. I need you. Hmm. The Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I need you. I acknowledge you in my life. I am a sinner and I'm not afraid or ashamed to say it. I, a sinner is simply someone who misses the mark. I don't always hit the mark, do you? Are you, are you going to say you have no sin in your life? That you always get it right? Oh my goodness, have mercy on your soul if you think that about yourself. You're not going to get it always right. You're going to say the wrong thing. You're going to do the wrong thing. You're going to be the wrong thing. And that's not to put shame on you. It's speaking truth with love. You need a savior. He will save you from yourself because you need him. He is the way, the truth, and the life because he paid the price. He covers our sin. He gives he gives us life. He gives us way. He gives us truth. He brings us safely to Abba Daddy because he paid the price of our brokenness and our waywardness and our sinfulness. That's the good news. The good news. The good tidings of Christ. He made the way. He knows the way. He'll take you home safely to Abba Daddy. Find him. Seek him with all of your heart. Acknowledge him. Ask him to come. Ask him now. Yeshua, Jesus, come to me and let me hide under the shadow of your wings. Let me hide under under your radiant light. Let me eat your bread. Let me drink your water. Let me find your way. I need you. That's all it takes. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. I need you. And if your pride or your tradition won't let you say that, I pray for you that you will hear the call of the Savior, that he will show up in your dreams, that he will show you his light. I have compassion. I understand. I get it. That there are traditions and you are deeply embedded in your traditions. I get that. And he can break through that with his radiant light and give you love like you never knew, give you a way, give you a hope, give you life. He can do that. He can do that. Boom! In a nanosecond. And so, Holy Father, come, 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 come and open the eyes of those whose eyes are still shut tight and need to have the light of your love. Open their eyes to see, their ears to hear, whisper in their souls, I love you, I know you by name. I named all the stars in the universe. I am the way, I can help you. I will see you through, do not be afraid. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. And even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod 
and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I told you that I studied way, uh, um, if you prayed with me right there, I let me back up a minute, let me slow down a minute. If you prayed for Yeshua Jesus to give you, to become your shepherd, your master, then let me know that. I'd love to know. I will encourage you, that's all, just encourage you. And um, by the way, whether you do or you don't, the angels in heaven rejoice, the angels in heaven. There's a hallelujah chorus breaking out all over eternity. Before I wrap up today, um, I told you that I studied way, truth, and life deeply. And um, uh, way, um, it's, it's, I have to put the, the specs on for this. It's zoe, and it means um, it's it, that's in the Greek, the Koine Greek, um, the state hmm, of one who is possessed of vitality. Hello, that's not way, that's life. <laughs> I titled it wrong. Hang in there with me a few more minutes. Some of you are saying, "Yeah, Janie, I knew you got that one wrong." It's hodos. Um, no, it's pronounced Hadas. 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 Does that, those of you who know Greek, is that ringing a bell now? I'll get it right. Hadas. And it, what way means is a road. <laughs> a road. The way is a road. Didn't I say to you earlier that he is El Camino Real? Well, that's what he meant when he said, I am the way. I'm the road. Huh. Walk on me. Walk with me. He's the road. That's what it means. Okay, that's way. Uh, truth. Now let me make sure I get this right. Here it is. Alathia. Alathia in Greek. And I may not have pronounced that exactly right, but close enough. Close enough. And it means what is true in any matter under consideration. Ha! Good stuff. Truly. The true truth. He's the true truth. In accordance with the truth. He's the true truth. Wow. Good stuff. In reality, he is the truth. <sighs> Didn't I tell you? He's not a way. He's the way. He's the true truth. Love it. Now we get to life. That's, I had it titled wrong. You can't see my words, but Zoe, Zoe. And that means, oh, listen, the state of being possessed of vitality. It is life in its deepest possible expression. I am the life. You looking for the good stuff, the good stuff that never ends, that gets deeper and richer and more vibrant. As you get older, you get better. You don't get lesser, you get more. If you're walking in the life of Christ, it just gets better. You just get more of that good stuff. You get more alive than ever. <laughs> Take it from me. I'm no spring chicken right here. <laughs> but you knew that because I remind you of that. Hey, I think I have to laugh. I have to be real. I don't know how else to be but real. I have to help you find the real. I have to laugh with you and cry with you and love you. 
and be real with you because we need real. We need real. The world is full of falsehood. The world is full of wrong roads. The world is full of wrong truth, or if there is such a thing, of lies. The world is full of temporary life, but I want to give you the road. I want to give you huh, the truth. I want to give you the life, the life of God. I was discussing this lesson with big dog Don, my husband, Pastor Don, by the way. I didn't even say Happy Father's Day. Forgive me to all of you men out there who are fathers. Happy, happy Father's Day. May you be blessed with the, hmm, the crown of life from Yeshua. May you be guided by him so that you can help so many under your care find the way, the truth, and the life of God. Men out there, be real fathers. Help your little ones find the way, the truth, and the life. If they won't listen, then pray for your loved ones. So I was discussing with my dear husband, this lesson, and he said, whoa, very important stuff. I said, yep, very important. Pray, pray for the audience. Pray for people all over the world. And he is right now as we speak in the nearby room. And together, we came up with an aha, and I'm going to end with that. The way, the truth, and the life could be called the trinity of truth. The Father is the way, the Son is the truth, and the life is the Holy, Holy Spirit of God. It's the trinity of truth. Wow. It's the trinity of truth. It's the trinity of Yeshua. It's the trinity of how to keep our footing in the wilderness of the world. It's the trinity. I, I I, when I got the privilege of studying this, I didn't even know where to start. It's so powerful. But I hope and pray you have gotten some of this trinity into your soul and that you will not be ashamed or afraid to say that Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. Say it with love, but say it with conviction and be willing to bear the cross of Christ. Be willing to take the hatred and the mocking of the world when you speak the words after him. We need to speak these words after him because the world needs to know even if they hate to hear it and even if they call it exclusive. It is the life, the truth, the way, the road, and the Everyone who is lost needs it. And if you speak it, there will be those who will hate you, but there will be those who hear the words of eternal life. In fact, the disciple Jesus, Yeshua, had this experience. The multitudes were following, but the deeper and the more that he said, lots of people turned away. But he turned to his disciples. That would be me. That would be many of you listening. And he said, are you also going to leave? And they said, they looked at each other. Well, are we guys? Are we going to leave? And then Peter the rock spoke up and said, but where would we go? For you speak the words of eternal life. Oh, my friends, it makes me want to weep. Where are we going to go? Don't go away from this. This is it. There is no place else to go. Stay with him. Stay with him. And with that, I, I want to read a longer poem. And as I read it, I don't have the words for you. I'm going to put on my spectacles and I want you to close your eyes. You don't have to look at my spectacles. And maybe the, this, these words will be your words. It's called, Lead On, Luminous Lord. And so, please, um, Let's just close. Let's just, just make this like our prayer. It was my prayer one morning, 
and I hope it will nourish you in some way. And so here it goes. Lead on, luminous Lord, for I am your be for I am your beloved child. Abba calls. Lead me home where I belong. For you are crowned with glory and with honor, won by willingness to suffer and to die. It is only you I trust to lead the way. Abba calls. I desire salvation from all that wages war against my soul. Though foes attempt to block the narrow way, stay with me. Abba calls. Help me hear your words when darkness growls, and I am overwhelmed with weakness and with fear. Steady me. Abba calls. Lay your hand of peace upon my shoulder. Your presence is the garden of sweet desire. I follow closely to love's longing. The subtle scent of beauty fills the air. Abba calls. I'm coming to the place of my belonging to know my Abba as I am fully known. I'm coming with his joy in rich abundance to join the other loved ones by the throne. I will worship in his radiant glory, Abba, Son, and Spirit, three in one. Creature and creator are united forever loved, forever whole, forever known. Abba calls. Yes, he does. He calls. And I love him with all of my heart and all of my soul. And I know that many of you do as well. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling away, and who will bring us with great joy into his radiant presence. All oh, glory to God. To him alone is God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, honor, dominion, and power belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. All glory to God. Until next week, my friends, blessings and honor and glory to him alone. I'll be praying for you. Goodbye.